Hi everyone, Jeff here again for VIP Vision. In this video, I'm going to be talking to you about Intelligent Video Surveillance or IVS and how that applies to VIP Vision IP cameras and network video recorders. So what is IVS? Well, as the name implies, IVS is in an intelligent method for triggering on video. So when I say intelligent, I'm really comparing it against motion detection or like your standard motion detection. Now where it varies is with most typical motion detection, you've only got really two things that you can do to control the way that the motion, detect, motion detection actually functions and triggers. Um, the first way of course is masking out an area. So I can say, I don't want to see those trees over there. So I'll draw a box around the trees and say, yeah, ignore all of the data in those trees over there. Um, and the second method is my sensitivity. So then I can say, oh, you know, I really only want to detect when an object of a, say a certain size, maybe that triggers a certain number of motion detection blocks arrives in my scene. And I want to trigger based off that. Now, this doesn't always work particularly well especially when you're talking about sort of outdoor scenes, areas where there's lots of things sort of waving around. Um, it's very easy to get false triggers with video motion detection. And because of that, um, it's not really something that you want to be triggering notifications from or triggering alarm events from. It's not something you want to be, you know, using on a daily basis um, to determine whether there's actually someone present in, in an area where they shouldn't be or possibly to see whether there's a car that's driving somewhere it shouldn't be driving, that sort of thing. So. IVS, Intelligent Video Surveillance, that's where, where that comes in. Now, in this video, there's, there's a few different ways of setting this up on VIP Vision products. Um, in, in this video, I'm going to be showing you using a network video recorder connected directly to a camera. Um, you could also set this up via the web interface of the network video recorder, via the web interface of the, of the camera. You can do it using a Smart PSS remote view software. Um, but this is the, probably the most basic way and the easiest way for people to get their head around how IVS functions. Now, I'm just going to show you the setup that I've got here just to show you um, what am I going to be doing today. So, as you can see here, I've actually got an IP camera set up and it's looking just at a white surface, which happens to be a whiteboard. And this is what I'm going to be doing my triggers on. The reason why I have chosen this versus a separate scene is just to try and make it a bit easier for you to understand what's going on with our intelligent video surveillance. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut across to a network video recorder now. And this network video recorder is connected to the camera that I just mentioned. Okay, so this is our NVR and it's our NVR and it's, it's staring at a white surface as I mentioned before. Now, um, the first rule that I'm going to show you, I should probably mention this, there's four basic rules. Okay, um, so you've got your video tripwire. So video tripwire is, as you'd imagine, if I set a line over an object, I want to know whether a, a, a blob has moved from point A of the line across the line to point B of the line, or possibly from B back to A, or both. Okay, so going from, from point A to point B, point B to point A, or maybe even both. And you can set the direction on something like that. The second method is uh, through video intrusion detection. Okay, so intrusion detection is I'm going to set a box and I can trigger on either someone entering the box, something or someone leaving the box, or something appearing in the box. So if for some reason it didn't cross a line entering the box, it just happened to appear in there, I can trigger on that as well. So that's intrusion detection. The next two are sort of tied together. So it's abandoned object and foreign object, or sorry, abandoned object and missing object detection. So uh, our abandoned object means that something that we, we didn't see in the scene before is now in the scene. And that might be something that we, we want to avoid. Okay, so let's say um, you know, there's a cliche example of maybe a, a suitcase left somewhere that happens to contain some sort of explosive or something like that. And we want to detect for a foreign object in an area. Um, there's a, when the missing sense, maybe someone's taken something away. Okay. Maybe we've got a camera that's guarding something that's, that's very important that it doesn't move. So let's say it's, it's over an area of a piece of jewelry that's fixed and doesn't move. And you want to make sure that no, nothing happens to it. Okay. You want to trigger on the, you know, just in case that goes missing, you want to trigger on the fact that it's missing. So I'm going to jump across now to the recorder. Okay. As I mentioned before, just a blank white surface here, just to make it a bit easier for you to see. So first thing I'm going to do is log into our network video recorder main menu. I'm going to log in using my pattern password here. And there we go. So we're presented with our operation info and settings section. From the settings section, we're going to select event. Okay. And since this is a, is a camera that supports IVS, I'm going to select it from the list. So in this case, it's, select, it's we're looking at channel three. 
So channel D3, you can see down the bottom here, channel three is the one that I have connected uh, and looking over this table here. Now, the first thing that I need to do is add an intelligent rule. After I select IBS, add an intelligent rule. Now in here, I'm gonna select either tripwire, intrusion, abandoned or missing object. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is just select tripwire. We're not a PTZ camera, so I'm not gonna select a preset. We'll do another video showing how PTZ cameras work later on. There's a little bit more involved with that. And the next thing I'm gonna do is click draw. So draw, now this is actually the line that I'm going to, to draw as my video tripwire. Now to give me some indication where I am here, I'm gonna just draw a line down this whiteboard here. And this is the line that I'm going to trigger on. So I'm just going to draw a rule here. So I click one side and just drag across to the other side. And once I'm there, right click. And then that shows me my rule. Now you'll see from there that I have an arrow pointed in either direction. This means that it can cross from side A to side B or from side B back to side A. And we will trigger on both of these rules. Um, that's set up from here. So we can go from A to B. B to A or both. So I'm going to leave it set to both for now. You can name the rule here. I'm just going to leave it set to rule one. And if you look at the top here, you can see that we're looking at a video tripwire rule by this icon. The only other thing that you really may want to set on here is actually the detection area. Okay. So no, not so much the detection area, but the detection um, sizes. So if I click on here, you'll see that I have a little blue icon in the middle of the screen down here. This is my minimum size. Okay. So the minimum size that I'm going to trigger on is here. Now I can make that quite large or I can keep it the same size as it is. I can make it quite small. So I know that the objects I'm going to be triggering on are probably around about this size. Now let's say, um, you know, you wanted to um, uh, maybe detect cars or something like that. You would draw but cars, but not, not um, say trucks, for instance, you would set this size to the size of a car and the biggest size, which is out here to the size of a truck, you would exclude that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave my minimum size here and then I'm going to grab my maximum size and drag that in. Okay, so that's, that's my maximum size here. So I'm just going to select OK to that. And now the only other thing I'm going to do just for the purposes of this video is I'm going to set up how we do our triggering. So for the video, I'm going to want to set a buzzer just so that you can know when this rule has been triggered. I don't necessarily have to be setting a buzzer. I could be setting something like an alarm output. I could be recording this channel, which is something you would often want to do. I could record a different channel. So I could say, when I see a video rule triggered on channel three, record channel one or something like that. I could activate a PTZ, have a PTZ go to a certain preset. I could trigger a tour. So a tour on the recorder. And so I could, I could show um, the person who might be watching the recorder, which camera has detected the trigger if I wanted to. Um, I could take a snapshot. I can take a snapshot. I can email that somewhere if I wanted to, that snapshot. I could log it. I'm going to be logging. I could even trigger a voice prompt. Okay, so if I had voice prompts loaded on this recorder, I could trigger through the audio output an MP3, for instance, which, which you know, might be useful for certain events. But for me, I'm just going to leave it set to buzzer. So I'm going to go OK. And apply. Okay, now that's been set. So I'm going to right click to exit. And now you'll see that I've got this line here that I set before. It's a blue line. Okay, and it's just tracing over the top of the other line that we saw a second ago. Now, it's worth noting that once you set this up, the camera may take a little while to settle, you know, up to 30 seconds to settle in some cases. So don't be alarmed if, if the rule doesn't trigger immediately. So as soon as you're setting it up, you're not seeing things actually happen. Now, how long it takes to settle depends on the scene and it depends on basically what, what camera it is, what the particular camera that you're using, and the resolution it's set to, things like that. So don't be too alarmed if you don't see it triggering straight away. Okay, so I'm just going to switch back. Now we'll just see if it has now. To use uh, as trigger objects here, I'm actually going to be using little RC cars. Now you'll see that there's a little green, green box that it's detecting, sort of showing over my arm at the moment. Now that's letting us know basically that IVS is functional. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push this little matchbox car through the scene. And hopefully you heard just then that it triggered on that event. So I just pushed it through. It's Ford GT across the detection zone. You'll see that it's drawn a green box around it and it's triggered. One more time. 
I can go the other way as well if I want to. So I could go from, from side B to side A. And we get the trigger. I can go again from side A back to side B. And it's that simple. And if you wanted to see, I can, I can put multiple things like around the tripwire zone if I want to. So long as nothing actually clips that tripwire zone, this will not go off. Okay, so I could have motion out here. I could have motion out here. And nothing is going to go off until something breaks that tripwire line. And something within the size range that we specified earlier with our blue boxes. Okay, so that's, that's how you set up tripwire. Now, um, it's worth noting with tripwire and also with intrusion detection, you should probably make sure that um, any tripwire rules that you set up have to be in the middle of a scene, okay? So don't expect that um, a tripwire rule set at the edge of a scene is going to detect an object as soon as it comes into view. It, the camera needs a little while to detect that an object is there and an object is moving. It needs to do its blob detection, okay? So don't worry too much about the fact that, um, yeah, you need to basically set, make sure that your scenes are set up in order to not, not run into the limitations of the camera where you're trying to detect things at the edges of scenes, okay? So that's our tripwire rule. Just to show that one more time, I'll just pass another object through and there you go. We've triggered. So I'm going to move all those off to the side now. And the next rule that I'm going to show you is intrusion detection. So again, I'm going to select main menu, event. Now I'm going to delete this rule first from here. I'm going to apply that to make sure that the rule goes away. I'm just going to clear my line again. Now the next rule, that I'm going to want to set is intrusion. So add, I'm going to select intrusion this time. I'm going to leave the preset blank again. Now I'm going to draw. So with intrusion detection, I'm actually going to draw a box. Okay. So a box, it doesn't actually need to be any regular box. It just needs to be something I can draw with straight lines. So I could do something like this. Okay. And there's no problem with it being, as I said, an, an irregular box. So I'm just going to trace over the top of that. So I'm clicking, 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 and right click once to complete the box. And here we go. That's our, that's our intrusion rule that we've got there. Now, as I mentioned before, using these buttons up the top, we can actually set our minimum size and our maximum size. Okay. Maximum and minimum detection sizes. Our rule number here, again, we can change the name, our section here under action. So I could either select crossing, so crossing any of these lines in here, okay? Or I could select appear, so just appearing inside this box with or without crossing the lines, okay? Um, in this case, I'm going to leave it set to crossing, but experiment with that. I can select whether I want it to see, I want it to trigger only on an enter, only on an exit, or whether I want it to trigger on both entry and exit. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to select both. And I'm going to go OK. And now that's finished. Again, I'm going to set my trigger to my buzzer so that you can understand what's going on. One other thing I didn't mention before is we can actually set the period where this is active. So let's say I only wanted, um, you know, only wanted it active between outside of work hours. Okay, I can set it so that it's inactive between the periods of 8 and 6 p.m., 8 a.m. and 6 p.m., something like that. But for now, I'm just gonna leave that alone. Okay, I'm gonna apply that, and I'm gonna right click. And now you can see we've got our, our box that we've traced out. So, again, we'll use our trusty 4GT to enter the image. Now, as you can see there, the camera still hasn't settled yet, all right? So that's the reason why that didn't trigger. So if we wait just a little bit longer, as I mentioned before, 15 to 30 seconds before the rules start to settle. There you go, you saw a little green box appear. Okay, so now we should be operational. There you go, we've triggered on that side. Now I can cross from this edge and I'll get a trigger. I can cross from this edge and I'll get a trigger. I can introduce another object and another object. And so long as it sees it and detects it as separate things entering, you'll notice that it triggers. 
Okay, so that's, that's intrusion detection. As I mentioned, intrusion detection is basically the same as a, as a line crossing, except you've got more options. You can draw a bigger area, you can say whether you, know, you want to actually check whether something's just crossing a line or whether it just magically appears inside the line. Sometimes you'll find that the cameras might miss the initial line crossing, so appears might actually work better for you. Um, again, with this, make sure that it's away from the edges of the scene of the camera, okay? The camera needs to watch the moving object as it appears, so don't don't put a tripwire line right on the edge of, edge of the camera that's watching a driveway or something like that. You want to put it in the middle of the scene. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to show you is just our, our abandoned objects and our missing objects. Okay, so I'm just going to switch back across now. Going to select right click and main menu again. And this time I'm going to select events and I'm going to delete this intrusion event again. If you are changing between rules, I'd suggest you do delete rather than just changing the rule. Okay, so delete, apply, and then re-add. Okay, so I'm gonna re-add. This time I'm gonna select abandon object. Okay, so in this, I'm gonna select an area and what's gonna happen is when I select that area, um, I'm going to, it's gonna have a certain scene. And if for some reason we detect something else within that scene, we're gonna trigger. Okay, so I'm gonna draw again. So I'm gonna use the same box that I did before. So again, click, left click, left click, left click, left click, left click, right click to complete the rule. Now, this is our duration in here. I'm gonna leave it set to 10 seconds, but you can increase or decrease this number if you'd like. This is how long the recorder needs to see something in the area before it triggers, okay? So as you can see at the top, I mentioned the, the, you know, the cliche missing uh, object or foreign object, I should say, which is, you know, your uh, suitcase. So as with before, we can set our minimum size and our maximum size. Oh, if I can grab it there. Okay, our minimum sizes and our maximum sizes of objects that we care about. Um, again, you'll just need to play with those depending on the scene. So I'm gonna leave it set to rule one and I'm gonna select okay. Again, I'm gonna set our trigger. Okay, and I'm gonna select buzzer and okay, and apply. Right click, right click, and there we are. Now, what we're looking for in this scene is, is something in it that shouldn't be there, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna place an object within the scene, and after the 10 second period, it will detect that there's an object in that scene and trigger. Okay, so I'm gonna place again the 4GT in the middle of the scene, and we'll wait our 10 seconds, so. Just wait for that to count down. And there you go. We've detected the foreign object in the scene. Okay, now if I take that away, it will reset and we can do the same thing again. So I'll just leave it for a few seconds so that it resets. And this time I'm going to use USB stick just to mix things up and a mouse. And we'll just wait for that to time out and detect the object. And there you go. So now it's detected those foreign objects. So we'll take them out of the scene. So hopefully that's a good idea on a good indication on how the, um, the foreign object detection works. Okay. The abandoned object detection works. Now in this case, I'm just going to show you a missing object, which is exactly the opposite, okay? So picture you had something of high value sitting somewhere and you wanted to point a camera straight at it so that you're watching it the whole time, but you also wanted to get alerts if for some reason it went missing. Now, um, there's also, let's say there might also be other things in the scene which prevent you from just using motion detection. There might be shadows, things like that. Um, IVS gets rid of, or doesn't get rid of, but certainly alleviates a lot of the hassles that you find with just typical motion detection in situations like that. So I'm gonna switch back again now. Okay, so again, I'm gonna right click, select main menu and event, and I'm going to delete this one again and apply and add. Now, as I said before, I'm gonna select missing object this time. I'm going to draw. Now, again, I'm gonna use the same space I did before. 
right click once to end the rule and I'm going to put a duck and a go-kart in the middle of the scene just to mix things up okay so again 10 seconds again I can select my minimum sizes and maximum sizes okay so in this case you know I'll just have our maximum size or minimum size roughly the same size as that cut and I'll draw a maximum size to be again somewhere same size similar to that cut um, I'll leave our 10 seconds I'll leave our rule and again you can see at the top here a little object so I'm missing object detection I'll go okay and I'm going to set up our trigger again to the buzzer okay apply and you'll see that we've got that rule set there now. So we'll wait again, we'll just wait for a few seconds just to make sure that, um, that the camera stabilizes on that scene. Again, kind of important to do that. Don't worry too much about um, missing triggers during that period. Um, it's just the time that the camera uses to familiarize itself with the scene. Okay, so now what's gonna happen is I'm gonna remove this object from the scene. Now you'll see that there's like shadows and things happening. We're gonna well, it's going to completely ignore those sorts of shadows. The only thing it's going to trigger on is when this cart gets moved out of scene. Now, it can be off to the side, just so long as it gets moved to somewhere that's no longer in that image. We'll just wait for it to count down. And there you go, we're triggering on a missing object, okay? So it's gone. It's triggered, then it's gone. Now, if for some reason it reappears in the scene, it will actually detect that the object is back in the scene. It doesn't need to be in exactly the same orientation as it was before. Um, and from that, it will reset and it will be able to be triggered again. So one other thing that might be worthwhile knowing is that we can do multiple things at the same time, okay? So we can, we can trigger multiple uh, IVS rules at the same time in the one scene. So we can have tripwire, intrusion, and missing or foreign objects um, in the same scene. So in this case, I'm just gonna do a couple of tripwires or maybe do a tripwire and an intrusion on the same scene. And that way you can see. So we've still got our foreign object or our missing object set up there. So I'm gonna delete that. So back to event, delete the event, apply, add. Now in this case, I'm gonna do a tripwire and I'm gonna go draw. Now I'm going to put the tripwire line, let's say here. Okay. And I'm going to draw across that line and right click to finish. Now in this case, just to show you a little bit different, I'm going to say only in that direction am I going to trigger. Okay. So I'm going to go, okay. On that, I'm gonna leave my motion windows exactly the same as they were before. Okay, well not motion windows, I should say my size windows, exactly the same size as that they already are, just to show you that it will work. Click apply, and let's see, let's do a, another rule, and let's make it intrusion. I'm gonna draw the rule, I'm gonna make the intrusion rule the same area as I had before. And in this case, I'm gonna say, I only wanna trigger when something enters the scene. And I wanna trigger, oh, sorry, enters, and I wanna trigger just on that. Again, I can set my sizes. So I'm gonna say, change the size a little bit and go okay. As before, I'm gonna trigger the buzzer on both of these, just so that you can hear what's going on and apply right click right click and there you go so now you can see we've got our arrow here saying that I only want to trigger on things that are going that way okay so from A to B and in our intrusion area here I only want to trigger on things entering okay rather than things exiting so I'm just going to show you that again Okay, so I'm gonna come around the side here. Hopefully the camera's had enough time to settle. It looks like it has. And I'm just going to trigger across there. Okay, so that triggered. Now, if I go back the other way, it did not trigger. And because we didn't completely cross this line here, 
this didn't trigger either. However, if we do enter the line completely, we're going to trigger. So as you can see, we've got two rules, both functioning at the same time. And there's no reason you couldn't also do this with foreign object and missing object as well, or abandoned objects as well. Okay, so the last thing I probably just want to show you in this video is what you need to do to set up recording on these events, because that's usually the thing that you're most interested in, recording and possibly triggering. Triggering happens usually through the phone app, okay? So IDMSS for iOS, GDMSS for Android. Um, that's set up through the alarm manager in the app, but the recording functions are obviously all done on the network video recorder. So I'm going to flip back across to that now. And what I need to do is right click, select main menu. And what I'm going to do here is set my storage up. Now I'm just going to remove these items from here just so we stop triggering on them. There we go. And what we need to do is you can see IVS or intelligent video surveillance up here. We need to enable this for the camera that we're using. So in this case, I'm using channel D3 and you'll see that it's, I've already set it up on this camera. Okay. But basically you need to set it so that we have our orange bars set to each section. Now, given that I'm recording continuous, all of these events would still be here regardless. But if you want to trigger on the IVS or you want to, um, let's say not trigger, you want to make it more easy to see, IVS events and playback, you must have this selected. Okay, so in this video we went over IVS or intelligent video surveillance. Um, hopefully you can see where, where you can use it versus motion detection, why it's useful compared to motion detection, how the blob detection tends to, tends to help. You really need to see this out in the wild, so you know something mounted in areas where you've got you know trees waving and cars outside of the scene and shadows and things like that that you don't want to trigger on. Um, Keep in mind, if you are triggering on tripwire or you're triggering on intrusion, make sure that you have those two events. Um, whenever you're triggering them, you're doing them inside the scene so that the camera has had some time to actually take notice of what's going on in the image. I hope that's been helpful. Um, please leave your questions, comments, anything else below in the comments below. Please subscribe if you are enjoying these videos or if you find them useful in any way. Um, yeah, just let us know. Thanks for watching.